My name is Giselle Galloway. Um, I am here um, as a peer support specialist, but also as a presenter for Cal Mesa. Um, I do um, boast my lived experience uh, and as um, uh, Becky Brassfield said in one of the classes earlier, um, I really like how she put it, lived experience and expertise. So I'm going to steal that from her and um, say that I have lived experience and expertise um, in substance use recovery and really thriving in recovery. Um, uh, like Colin said, I work for Cal Mesa in the day and I support mothers in recovery by night. Our weekends. Um, so thank you for being here today. Um, today I'll be covering the program of the Medi-Cal Peer Support Specialist Certification here in California, cover a little bit about Cal Mesa and who we are and what we do and how to get certified. So um, at the end, uh, if you have any questions, um, if I have time, I will tackle questions. Um, feel free to put them in the chat. And then at the end, we'll go ahead and um, look at if, if there's a theme out there or several of the same questions, we can tackle those. Um, and if not, I will def definitely give you some contact information so that you can email us um, if you think of something later. So Cal Mesa is actually the long name is California Mental Health Services Authority. So that's what that stands for. And we are a joint powers authority for county behavior plans. Um, so if you don't know what joint powers authority, basically it, um, joint powers authorities are created entities in California that allow like two or more public agencies to jointly exercise common powers. And so we work uh, for uh, the uh, those government agencies and um, pretty much act like a government agency because we're contracted by them. Um, we develop and implement local, regional, and statewide mental health services and programs on behalf of its members. If you go to the main website, calmesa.com, we have lots of different programs. Um, today, I'll be presenting um, under the workforce program, specifically for California uh, certified Medi-Cal peer support specialists. So our staff in the program um, is on the screen for you. I'd like to introduce them to you. We have Ophelia uh, and Will, who right now are basically handling all of our administrative tasks. Um, yes, we've had some turnover. And yes, we're hiring. Um, so I want to put that plug in there. We are currently hiring um, We for a, a program specialist. Um, and so if you are interested in that, I'll, I'll share our website with you guys later. Um, I am the program supervisor. I did come in as a program specialist myself and am very familiar with the program, the administrative tasks, the policies, the procedures. Um, and now I oversee the program. So um, it's just great to be here with you guys. We don't work alone. We do have uh, a lot of other staff that um, does a lot of the background work and helps us and makes sure that we can do our job effectively. Uh, we have an administrative assistant, an epidemiologist who does all of our data. We have a program manager, a business analyst. We have a information technology person who helps us with the website and with the portal and all that stuff. And of course, the program director, uh, Lucero. So we'll start with a little bit of background on Cal Mesa and who, uh, how did we get founded and, and what we do here. We'll also talk a little bit about our responsibilities. Um, so basically, as you know, some of you may know, some of you may not know, um, the St Senate Bill 803 uh, passed a law making billing for peer services a new uh, 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 Medi-Cal benefit. Now, that was for counties that opted in. So behavioral health plans for counties that opted in. Um, most of them opted in. I think there's like 53 counties that opted in and very few that opted out. Um, those are listed on our FAQ page if someone's interested in looking at the whole list. Um, the Department of Healthcare Services, or DHCS, 
they would oversee the Medi-Cal program and the peer benefits. They set the certification standards, they set reimbursement rates, and they update the state waivers. Now, all of that, as you know, is the Department of Healthcare Services. Um, then the counties can opt into that peer benefit. They select uh, their certifying entity. So basically, who is going to run their certification program? Are they going to do it themselves? Are they going to hire somebody else? They contract with the Department of Healthcare Services. They also set up a billing system for reimbursement because they're, they're contracted with Medi-Cal. And then they do the employer and contract oversight as well. Uh, then comes CalMesa. CalMesa was actually chosen as the certifying entity, again, for um, all of the counties that opted in. It really streamline, streamlines the process. So instead of having one certifying entity per county, we have one certifying entity for the whole state, which actually brings about some benefits. If you certify in one county, you can work across another county. It makes it a little bit more streamlined. So you know what you need to do to certify, whether you're, you know, up in Sacramento or down in San Diego. Um, Cal so Cal Mesa was selected as a certifying entity. So as the certifying entity, we're going to certify the individuals. We're going to approve training providers. We're going to, we have an administration of board function. So we function as a board with an advisory council. Uh, we also are in charge of investigating any complaints against certified peer specialists. And then our peers, they actually satisfy the requirements for certification. And as I said, they can move across county lines as a certified workforce. We'll talk a little bit about the certifications and specializations. Um, I wanted to let you know that everything that I covered today is on our website. Um, there is a lot of information. I get the feedback. Um, I get feedback a lot that there's so much information um, and it's hard to navigate. But I want you all to know that we do have that search bar up here that you see next to the name uh, where you can type in keywords and that will bring up whatever matches that keyword. And then we also have our resource library. Um, as you can see right on that page, we have our updates and announcements. I would bookmark the page and go to it frequently. Um, as I said, we are, as you can see here, um, we are, uh, we just announced our continuing education provider applications that are open until today. Um, we have an announcement on our hiring position. And then uh, you can see the announcement at the very bottom, the Spanish version of the exam was uh, uh, released. So just a good page to kind of keep, keep you up to date on any um, certifying entity updates um, for the Medi-Cal peer support specialist certification. So the certification, only one certification for Medi-Cal peer support specialists is offered. So everybody in California would come through this um, certifying entity at this time. Uh, certification is for persons working with individuals in mental health or and or substance use disorder programs. So um, persons who are working or want to work with um, those that population. Uh, the certification is offered to folks who self-identify as a person having personal lived experience um, or lived experience as a parent, caregiver, family member, and like we said, in mental health or substance use disorder. Now there's one Medi-Cal peer support specialist certification, and then there's four specializations. Uh, the four specializations that you see listed here are the parent, caregiver, family member, peer, and that's working with other parent, caregiver, and family members. Um, and then we have the working with persons that are unhoused. There's also a specialization with working with persons involved in the justice system. And then the last sort of, um, specialization is working with persons in crisis. So those specializations are recognized by CalMesa. And if you take one of the specialization courses that are approved by CalMesa, then send us in your certificate. We will add that 
to um, our acknowledgement on your certificate of certification. So it would say Medi-Cal peer support specialist certification, specialization, working with persons in housed. Making sure I'm covering my notes. So the scope of practice uh, that was provided by DHCS and basically, it, there's three main components of the scope of practice for a Medi-Cal peer support specialist. The first one is educational skill building groups. Uh, so provided a supportive environment, providing a supportive environment in which the consumer and their families learn coping mechanisms and problem solving um, to help the consumer achieve their desired outcomes. Groups promote skill building for the consumer in areas of socialization, recovery, self-sufficiency, self-advocacy, development of natural supports, maintenance of skills learned, and other support services. It's not limited to that. The next scope of practice is engagement, so leading activities and coaching to encourage and support the consumers or participants uh, in behavioral health treatment. Uh, engagement may include supporting consumers in their transitions between levels of care, supporting beneficiaries and developing their own recovery goals and processes. And then lastly, a therapeutic activity. So a structured non-clinical activity to promote recovery, wellness, self-advocacy, relationship enhancement, development of natural support, self-awareness, values, the maintenance of community living skills um, to attain and maintain recovery within their communities. Um, those activities may include, but obviously are not limited to advocacy on the behalf of the consumer, promotion or self-advocacy, resource navigation and collaboration with consumers and others providing care or support to their consumers. So family members or significant support pers persons. So what's our role here at Cal Mesa? I'll talk a little bit about our role. What do we really do? <laughs> so again, we're the certifying entity and we have several responsibilities. One of them was or is to standardize um, the certification across the counties. So the certification standards are set by the Department of Healthcare Services, and then we make sure to kind of break those down and ensure that they're standardized across the county, that they're um, included in the program, they're included in the training, they're included in the exam, um, and that um, you know, it's standard that you're not going to get anything different, again, whether you're in, you know, Northern California or Southern California. Um, we also hold a stakeholder advisory counselor, which has members representing different counties, um, and they have been giving a lot of input to the policy development, to the landscapes, um, really to a lot of the different uh documentation and policies for Cal Mesa. Uh, the stakeholder advisory counselor met once a month. So every month uh, for the last couple of years. Now we are meeting uh, once a quarter for the public. And then privately, we do meet with the advisory counselor once a quarter also, just to see our next steps, what else is missing, where are the gaps, and to make sure that we're providing quality insurance assurance for the program and all of its different um, facets. Um, we also include our peer voice. So we have identified and reviewed uh, training provided curriculum. We identify and review the curriculum competencies for the four areas of specialization. And we include program staff um, that work for Cal Mesa that also identify as peers. So um, I am a product of that hiring myself. Uh, other things that we do is we issue the certifications, obviously, we review all of our applications to ensure that the individuals have satisfied the requirements. Um, we issue the certifications, we review applications for renewal. So right now the program is pretty new um, and the exam has been open a little bit over a year, uh, but the certifications are good for two years and then we do require renewals. Uh, and so we will be renewing, reviewing those applications to make sure that the applicant meets the renewal requirements. We, uh, for the exam responsibilities, we process reasonable accommodation requests. So we do offer many accommodations to ensure that the exam is available um, for anyone and everyone who needs to take it. And then we administer the exam as well. We do use a third party vendor to administer that exam. 
Uh, we also have rest responsibility of training. So we look at all of the training providers that you see of our, on our website. All of those we have looked at. We have um, basically gone through their uh, curriculum uh, page by page to make sure that the core competencies are there for certification. We also have reviewed and approved the parent caregiver family member peer uh, and also crisis care justice involved in unhoused curriculum. And currently we are opening, We like I said, we're open. Uh, I think today is actually the closing day for any CE providers that want to be CE providers for um, Cal Mesa. Due to the renewals, those rene we'll talk about that a little bit later, but due to renewal, we do need to have some CE providers to ensure that we continue to educate and professionalize as peer support specialists. So let's talk a little bit about what it's required to get certified in California. Um, again, I wanted to just note that our website here, if you look at the screenshot, it's just a screenshot of that top banner of our website. And so I just wanted to make sure that all of this information that I'm covering is going to be under your certification tab. Um, so that's that's why I'm showing that here. So the initial certification does have these requirements. So obviously everyone has to submit an application to Cal Mesa, everyone. So all candidates have to um, submit an application on our certification website. Now our website is different than uh, the Cal Mesa website. Did I put that on here? So if you see up here, the www.capeercertification.org. Now, if you go to the Cal Mesa page and go to peer certification, it will link you to that. But I just recommend to just go directly and have this bookmarked. Um, again, that's www.ca for California, peercertification.org. Um, so you have to uh, go to that website that I just mentioned and click on that register button. Um, you must be at least 18 years of age or older. You must possess a high school diploma or an equivalent degree. You have to self-identify as an individual with lived experience. So you're a peer. Be willing to share your own experience as a person with lived experience to help others in their recovery. Uh, have a strong dedication to recovery. Agree to the code of ethics. So we do have a Medi-Cal code of ethics for peer support specialists in California. And we do provide that to you in the application and on our website. And we do ask you to agree in writing to that. Uh, we do require an 80-hour Medi-Cal peer support specialist training from one of our approved vendors. Again, you can find that on our website. And then we require for the candidate to successfully pass the exam. Uh, the Application is approved for 12 months. So once your application is approved, we do give you a whole year to be able to take the training, to um, uh, study for the exam. And then you also have three attempts to take that exam. You do have to pay for each attempt, but after the third attempt, then that will um, expire that application. So how do you apply? Again, you go to our website at capeercertification.org. Don't forget it's .org. And then at the very top, you're going to see this register button that says login register. And that's going to start your journey into the application process. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is going to create an account. So it's going to ask you uh, to log in or sign up. You're going to click on that sign up portion. And you're going to enter your email or you can do um, an integrated login, like sign in with Google if you have a Gmail and you're on your uh, Chrome uh, browser. Uh, but you first create an account and then it'll send you an email. So you want to make sure that you verify that email. Go to your email and just click on the link that it sends you to verify that you got the email correct and that we have it correct. And then once you do that, it'll log you or you go back to our website and next time you do login register, instead of registering, it's just going to take you into this dashboard. So on the right here, you do see our dashboard and what that's going to look like. If you can see that first top here, uh, step one, the create an account is already has a little green checkbox. And then step two has a little green checkbox, but step two, if you read it, um, this particular person has already watched the video, but there is a 30 minute video. Um, and 
here it says you have completed the step. You can rewatch. But the first time you're here, obviously, it won't say that. It'll say watch the video here. And this be the, the link will be in the same location. And as you go, these check marks will get green every time you finish one until you get your certification. Uh, if you don't see this dashboard here, I did add this little arrow here that says apply for peer certification. Sometimes um, folks can see this a little bit easier, which is the, like the navigation pane. Okay, so we get a lot of questions about the application process. How long is it going to take? How long does it take to review? And so what we've done is we um, have set up in the certification how to apply portion of our website. We do have two things that we uh, folks find very, very helpful. So I just wanted to let you all know that they were here. Um, the first one um, on the left here, a little bit on the left, it's hard to read, but basically it's it's saying to follow that link um, with step-by-step -step instructions on um, a new application and how to basically guide you step-by-step. -step. So all of the sort of, if you look on the right, the certification timeline section, um, all of those also have steps. So step one here is register and watch the orientation video. Step two is to actually complete the application. Step three, we ask you to pay the application fee and we'll talk about fees in a little bit because I get some questions on that as well. And then step four is to take your 80 hour training and upload certificate. And we get asked, well, what if I already took the training? Absolutely, just go ahead and just jump, you know, you'll still have to do step one, two, and three. And then you just can in immediately go into step four and upload your certificate. Um, step five, if you look at step five, it says Cal Mesa reviews Cal Mesa review and approval of training certificate. And if you look to the right a little bit to that, maybe a little hard to read, but it says step five up to 14 day processing time. So we kind of give you an idea of what the process is going to look like. So once you, um, you know, hit submit to that application, uh, it's going to take us usually about 14 days. Now we do ask for at least 30 days. Again, as you can see, our staff, um, we've had some turnover, and right now we're managing multiple projects uh, with a small, smaller crew. So we do ask for 30 days, but normally it takes about you know, less than two weeks. Now, once you get that approval of your training certificate, we do ask that you pay the exam fee. Um, again, some folks get confused. They say, well, I already paid. Well, your paying is the application fee. The exam fee is separate, and um, you do have to pay it every time you take the exam. Now, most folks just pay once, take the exam and move on. But there have been uh, folks that don't pass on the first try. And so we do have to um, pay for the uh, the administrators of the exam. So that's why you see here step six. Um, step seven, uh, it says Cal Mesa sends an exam registration email. Again, all applications, uh, all Everyone who wants to take the exam has to fill out an application. So once you have uh, been approved and you've paid for that exam fee, then um, again, if you see to the right of that, it says up to 14 days processing time. Um, and so what we do with that is we grab your whole file. Um, we ensure that everything is ready to go. And then we send over your name and your um uh, data over to the exam administrator. Now the exam administrator checks to see if there's any accommodations, is there any discrepancies, um, and then they they send us a unique ID that you need to have in order to take that exam. That is the email that you get um, when it says their Cal Mesa sends exam registration email. We say you're ready for your exam. He's, here's your registration email. This is how you register for the exam. And you can register at any time you want. You can do day or night. You can do weekdays or weekends. Um, you can do it online from your, the convenience of your own home, or you can find a local center um, in your area that you can actually go and test in person. So we're pretty flexible about the exam. And, um, but that, again, that takes about 14 days. Um, then of course, step eight is actually schedule your exam appointment. Step nine is take and pass your exam. 
And then step 10, uh, again, it says they're up to a 14 day processing time after your exam, we will send you another email that we have received the results and that you are now certified and we will send you a copy of your certification. You will be added to the data registry and um, yeah, you would, you'll have this under your belt. So it's a great time for us and uh, as well for the candidates. Uh, I was going to say something about, oh, for scheduling your exam appointment, I do um, just want to make sure that folks um, know that sometimes there's not an immediate availability. So don't wait till the last minute. Remember that your applications are approved for a 12 month period. So if you were approved in January and you're waiting till December, um, once you start scheduling your exam, it might, they might not have openings for a couple of weeks. And so I've seen that happen where people are just too close to their deadline. Um, and, you know, that's just an undue stress. So just give yourself, you know, a, a month or two before your 12 months, obviously you can do it right away, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys know that sometimes there is a wait um, for the, especially for the in-person exams. So let's talk a little bit about the certification exam. Again, on our website, you go to the exam tab. Um, please note that all candidates are required to fill out an application to take the certification exam. So the certification exam has 120 multiple choice exam. They're all multiple choice. You don't have to type in anything. You don't have, you know, it's not like a written essay or anything. Everything is multiple choice. Um, the content basically is going to cover um, these main main points here, which administration responsibilities, um, behavior health foundations, interpersonal skills, recovery support, advocacy, uh, community inclusion, resource linkage, and then crisis management. Um, and there's different percentages of those that come out. The tests are not, there's a bank of test questions, so not everybody gets the exact same test questions. Um, You'll have two and a half hours to complete the exam. And you do get a one, uh, I think like a 10 minute break um, right in the middle of the exam. Um, again, there are accommodations that are available if you need an extension to the time um, or if you need additional accommodations, they do need to be signed by a medical doctor. Um, and again, those also can take up to 30 days to process. So please, please ensure that if you need accommodations that you get those to us and you can get those as soon as your application is approved, you can get the accommodation request. Some folks wait until they're, they scheduled your exam. And we actually ask that you do not schedule your exam until your accommodations have been approved so that when we send your file over those accommodations can all be scheduled for you. Um, we talked a little bit about the reasonable accommodations that you must submit those prior to scheduling the exam um, and that the form must be signed by a medical provider. That is also on our website under exam. Uh, and then there's a sub tab that says accommodation form. And uh, just so you know, uh, oh, I think I already talked about that the exam is administered by a third party, Pearson View. So you might hear that word Pearson View. Um, and those are the, that's the test administrators. Um, very, very important is our rescheduling and cancellation of a scheduled exam. Please, please, please be aware um, for online exams, for online exams, you can cancel or reschedule any time up to one hour before. So if something happens, you know, you lost your internet, your computer crashed, whatever, up to one hour before your scheduled appointment, um, you can call or you can just go online and just do it yourself. You can just click on reschedule there. Um, if you're doing it in person, you only have 48 hours before your scheduled appointment. So whatever you do, do not miss your scheduled appointment. We still have to pay for that. You still have to pay for that. Um, it'll be a no show. Um, if you're outside that cancellation window and you won't be able to cancel or reschedule and then you forfeit your entire exam, it, it's considered as one of the tries and it's also considered as, um, like I said, one of the exam fees. So please, please, please keep that in mind. I really want to stress that it's really important. Um, you know, these these things are out of our control. They're just policy and procedures and, and rules. And so, you know, it's just something that we want to make sure that everyone is aware of. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what happens after your certification. Um, we do require a biennial renewal, which is every two years. And under the certification tab, 
you'll see here there's some sub tabs. Again, I told you guys there was a lot of information. Um, if you go to that bottom uh, tab under certification, it says certification renewal and continuing education. And that is going to have all of the information that's covered today. And it'll probably answer a lot of questions about which CEs are valid, et cetera, et cetera. So the state standards are that the renewal will happen every two years. You can apply up to 90 days prior to the expiration. Um, every time you renew, we require 20 hours of continuing education. So don't forget that. Um, uh, inclusive of six hours of law and ethics. Now, a law and ethics could be anything. It could be mandatory reporting, working with seniors, working, um, uh, what are the other things like uh, mandatory reporting, working with seniors. Um, there, there's a whole list on our website. So it, it's not necessarily that you just have to do law and ethics. There are other things that count towards law and ethics. So um, please take a look at that and um, make sure that you have those 20 hours of continued education. Start working on that, you know, early. Um, certification obviously is going to be considered expired if you're not renewed by its expiration date. Um, and then there's other terms, like if you're, you expire and you try to renew from one year, you may renew, um, but you're going to have to pay a renewal and then late fees. Um, then there's another phase within one or four years from expiration date where you may renew, um, but you're going to have to retake the certification exam. And then beyond four years, you just have to do a whole reapplication, just reapply, um, to recertify instead of just a renewal. Um, we do ask you that you read and re-sign the agreements of the Code of Ethics for the Medi-Cal um, Support Specialist uh, Code of Ethics here in California. And then there are some associated fees as well. Uh, for CE hours that are accepted, the CEs are going to be accepted from the Cal Mesa approved continuing education training providers. Uh, we are now processing that. Like I said, it was open January 1st to the 31st. We do have quite a list of CE providers that have applied. And so uh, stay tuned for that uh, CE page or CE training providers on our website. Um, also, any pre-approved courses that are top at Cal Mesa approved training provider. So if some of you, for example, grandparented in, I myself did the grandparenting process. So I could actually go back and take the core competency training, uh, 80 hours or any of the specialized training. And that would also count as one of the CE hours or uh, full CE hours um, for my renewal. Any training that's offered by the county behavioral health departments and its contracted and contracted network providers. So even if they're not Cal Mesa, approved training providers. Um, if you um, if you uh, are doing training that's offered by the county, and you'll know because it has a county logo on the training certificates, and that's how you'll know. And of course, any training courses that are completed through any accredited schools, like in vocation education, city, you know, colleges, universities, that sort of thing. Um, we also accept CE hours for professional certifications and licensing board. And some examples there are like KD, KDAP, um, APA, and that sort of thing. So again, make sure that you're um, getting your CE hours from approved training providers. Um, so that when you come and renew after two years, we can definitely count all those hours towards your 20 hours of continuing education. And don't forget the six hours of law and ethics. So uh, supervision of peer workers. So the state has some standards on supervision of, of state workers. If you go to our training tab and then click on the sub tab, training for supervisors, that's where you're going to find the information on state qualification, uh, the best practice guides, and also our uh, supervisor training that is required um, within 30 days, uh, no, 60 days of becoming a uh, supervisor for a Medi-Cal peer support specialist. So a supervisor of Medi-Cal peer, peer support specialist must meet, meet one of these three options. Um, Basically, option one is have a medical peer support specialist certification and two years of experience working in the field and completed the supervisor training. 
Option two would be to be a non-behavioral health professional, including like registered certified substance use disorder counselor and worked in the behavioral health for a minimum of two years and completed an approved supervisor training. And then option three is have a high school diploma, uh, have four years of behavioral health direct service experience, which may include the peer services, and then have completed an approved supervisor training. Again, this is DHCS uh, standard and um, in order to be a supervisor or within 60 days of beginning to supervise, um, please make sure that your supervisors or that, your, or that yourself as a supervisor completes the approved supervisor training. And again, that's available on our website at no cost to you. Um, so the supervision standard is to complete the supervisor of peer workers training. The training course is free to everyone on our certification website. The training shall be completed 60 days from starting that supervision. Uh, the training is ba based on SAMHSA's best practice standards, and the training is one hour, uh, or, you know, give or take one hour of self-paced training. All right, we'll move on to our data. So we have a lot of data on our website. And for, the, for you guys that like data, um, it's kind of fun to look at. If you go onto our website, um, here you'll see our website at the top. At the very far right, there's a little tab that says data. And this is what our data dashboard looks like. Um, it will uh, report insights into the community of uh, certified medical peer support specialists. You can personalize the data. So it's like an interactive data dashboard. You can choose the, the year, the specific demographics, such as like gender, or age group. Um, if you want to look at, you know, how many females, how many males, what counties, that sort of thing. Um, and uh yeah, and it, and oh, and it's real. It's it's live, so it's like real time. When somebody gets certified, it updates that number. I think I checked last time; it was like twenty seven hundred um, certified individuals. And we recently also added um, the certification pathway. Um, so initial grandparenting or out of state. Um, so yeah, a lot of data there to play with if you guys are interested in that. And then lastly, on our website, I'll cover our certification registry. So the certification registry, as you can see, is the second from the last link on the top of the website. It takes you to a page that shows here, like the bottom picture that says CalMesa Medical Peer Support Specialist Certification Registry. Um, you can search by name. Um, and then what I showed here is just a little trick. Some people have been asking me, how do I know how many people in certain county? Um, and if you can tell here, like, for example, I typed in Yuba County and here where it says one out of five results. So it's telling you we have five folks certified in that county. So um, you can also download the information. This is public information. Um, I blurred out the names here um, just as a common courtesy, but when you go onto the certification page, uh, sorry, certification registry, you can see um, the names of the individuals. You can also see, um, you know, the status of their uh, certification, um, if there has been any sanctions or anything that uh, you need to know from for that person as well. And then the county that they have been um and it's most the county of residence is what we track the county of residence there's folks that have moved from county to county so this is tracking the county of residence i'll have a little water <clears throat> okay um so we have a lot of resources for you um and i do want to cover those again our web page is your go to um, for everything certification wise. Um, again, it seems that there's a lot of information there, but um, again, we do have our search bar and we also have our resource library. I don't think I have a screenshot for that one, but the resource library is really cool. It's got a, a, a lot of downloads in, including the exam preparation guide. It's got some landscapes. Um, it's got uh, instructions on how to apply, how to upload your certificate. Uh, it's got instructions on um, how to become a train. I mean, it just basically 
it's full of resources for you. Um, it also includes um, the main guides that are translated in Spanish. Although now, uh, instead of different pages in Spanish, we did add the translate Google Translate um, plugin. So if you see that at the very top right corner for any language, you can just click that and it will actually translate everything that you're looking on the page. But we do have some downloadable Spanish um, documents in the resource library if you need to print those out to follow step-by-step -step instructions. Also on our website is our certification fee schedule. Um, important to note that it is for a standard a certification um, with one exam, it's going to cost you $250. $100 is for the application of certification, and we do wait for payment before we review the application. And then $150 um, for your certification exam. If you do need a uh, certification retake, that's going to cost another $150. And then the renewal at this time, we're going to be um, doing $80 fee for renewal only. Um, you don't see any training fees here, and that's because the training fees are set by each individual training provider. So once you go into our training page, um, there's lots of links for all of the different training providers, and you can click on that. There's contact information. They have a registration link. So contact that training provider directly for information on fees and registration. Um, yeah, and those are all located on our website. For those of you interested in provide and becoming training providers that are approved by CalMesa, um, we do uh, have openings for training providers that opens in phases. So I believe that the 80 hour training application was open from August to December. Then we had CE providers open January 1st to 31st. Um, and then later in the year, we'll have opening again for uh, 80 hour training providers. So. Again, keep your eye on our website. There are some fees pretty much straight down the board. It's $300 application for training provider for either the core competency or area of specialization or to just become a continuing education provider um, that also has a $300 fee. That fee um, is good for, I believe, two years. Um, and every two years we do um, do some quality insurance and ensure that, that you reapply to become a training provider. And let's see. Okay. Um, so there's lots of ways to communicate with us. Um, again, we have our website that's full of information. You can always email us at peer certification at calmesa.org. Uh, we uh, aim to reply to all emails 24 to 48 hours um, after we get them. And then we also have a phone inbox. So our phone inbox, we do call, um, just so you know, it is an inbox. Um, I've gotten some feedback, like yeah, we can't ever get a hold of you. We're not actually picking up that phone. We work off of a queue of voicemail. So just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. So please just call and leave a you know voicemail with your name, um, you know what questions you have and what's the best way to contact you, and then we will call you back um, with that information. Um, a lot of times um, we get both, so someone will call and leave a voicemail, but they'll always send they'll also send us an email, and usually the emails get replied to a little bit faster. To be completely honest, um, but again, if you prefer a phone call. You can also just email us and say, hey, can you give us a give me a call? I have some questions and put your phone number on the email and we will also do that. We'll just instead of answering the email, we'll pick up the phone and give you a call back and hopefully answer all your questions. Again, we do uh, aim to answer all phone calls and emails in 24 to 48 hours. Um, and if for some reason you don't hear from us, please, please reach back out and let us know. Um, I, I did have a complaint that. We um, weren't returning emails. I did go into our junk email box uh, the other day and found two different emails that for some reason were routed to um, spam. I don't know why uh, Microsoft chose to do that, but um, we are now checking our spam inbox as well daily to make sure that we don't miss your important emails. We're here to serve you. We're here to answer your questions and we're here to help you get certified. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we really are here to answer your questions. 
Um, and then we also have an FAQ on our website. So if we see a question that is continually coming via email or phone, then we tend to just add it to the FAQ page. So under the resource tab, click on the FAQ or frequently asked questions. And um, there might be there might be somebody already asked that question several times. And so we added it to the frequently asked questions. So always you can always go there and look as well. Lastly, I'll give you a bunch of really good links here. Um, these will uh, come out with the, uh, I think there's a handout that comes out with this. Uh, but basically, again, uh, our um, main certification website that we talked about, which is capeercertification.org. Uh, we do have specific links there on general certification information, the code of ethics, uh, details on CalMesa approved training providers. We have the exam preparation guide and then the reasonable accommodation request link for you. Uh, so again, the website is full of information. Please feel free to go on there and I will put the um, link on the chat um, just to make sure that you guys can all have that. So I'll put that on there as well. And that concludes my presentation. Um, I will stop sharing so I can see your beautiful faces and um, answer any questions. I don't see, I do see one question in the chat, so I'll tackle that one first. Um, we only have to do the continuing ed classes after we get certified, correct? That is correct. So thank you for asking that important question. So once you're certified, you do want to start um, accruing your CEs because they're only good for two years. So if you got certified in January of 2024, um, we're not going to accept a CE from December of 2023. Thank you for asking. Uh, I'm, can I... So I'm trying to type my question is very hard for me right now. No, don't you go ahead and ask. Okay. Uh, first of all, I noticed that you have the caregiver. Um, and I, I'm nobody, I'm, I'm an in-home care provider uh, and I'm living. Uh, so um, is that what, 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 what actually is that course uh, in caregiving? Got it. Understand. So the course um, is really uh, a specialization course to be a peer support specialist um, as a parent, caregiver, or family member of someone who is a participant of substance use uh, substance use disorder services okay. or mental health services. Okay. okay. So and yeah. So my next question, I got a lot of work to do. I'm all, I'm I'm in Shares uh uh Medical Peer Specialist training right now. Great. And uh we were talking uh me and one of the other students the other day about, you know, like our goals. And one of mine was I took the anger I got certified in anger management uh in 21. Um I've done case manager, housing, case manager. I've done all that. But the thing of it is, though, I really enjoyed the anger management. Uh, but when I became a provider, it knocked everything out of the way. I wasn't able to register, uh, you know, as a provider. Um, I wanted to start my own business, but I was told that I had to have supervision uh, unless I had a license in drug and alcohol counseling or MFT or something of that nature where I had a license, right? And so now I'm taking the peer specialist uh, course so that I could get back acclimated to, to uh, you know, my the service industry, the human service aspect of, of my career uh, because I've been out of the field for for a while I haven't been in involved and so um is this certification is I noticed that you said something about 
we would be put in a provider's list. So what I'm trying to understand is it's going to be similar to having a drug and alcohol license because I hadn't, uh, I was studying to take the exam uh, so that I wouldn't have to have supervision. And I'm trying to find out if this certification and, you know, is it equal or is, uh, basically is it kind of similar to having a drug and alcohol counseling like they're in the registry, you know, they, they've taken their exam, they've got their little license and stuff like that. Are we going to be getting the that's same? Exact, that's exactly right. Is it Donjay? Did I say yeah, that Yeah, right? it's Danji. Danji. Yeah. Dan, like Angie, but Danji. Yes. Right? Yes, Danji. This, um, this is exactly what it's like. It is a certification process, um, you know, with, with a board of certification, with a certification registry, um, in order for you to be able to provide services, um, mainly for, you know, Medi-Cal billing for Medi-Cal peer support specialists. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very, uh, very much like that. And the certifying entity is very much like the certifying entities for drug and alcohol counseling, obviously, except it's for Medi-Cal peer support specialists. Um, and uh, it does give you that professional title. And obviously, the peer workers have been around for decades and, and decades, but it's it's a way to really professionalize that position and, um, you know, to give the peer workers the, the place and the acknowledgement that they need um, in this profession. So thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Um, let's see, Daryl Smith has a question. Do they have any CEU providers available on the website yet? I am coming up on my first year mark of certification. Um, we do not have any Cal Mesa approved um, CE providers yet on our website, but there are other places that you can still get your CEs. Like we said, any accredited schools, vocationals, your, you know, your community college, uh, uh, as well as any county behavioral health uh, um, agencies or contracted. So there are already folks that are providing that. Definitely um, take a look at that to see if you can start getting those under your belt. Mm, any other comments or questions? Well, I'll just say thank you for your presentation. I really did enjoy it. It's, I heard this the first week of training, so it was good to go over it again because uh, a lot of times on your first day, you kind of like hear stuff, then you don't hear it. And uh, I think you were very thorough on some of the things uh, that I've, I've learned so far. So thank you again for facilitating. Thank you. And thank you for all you do out there and for continuing to uh, just, you know, go after your own certification and continue to advocate for folks. So it, I think it's so important. Like I said, me, myself, you know, I do a lot of volunteer work for uh, mothers in recovery, and it's something that I'm really passionate about. And, you know, not just you know, working on the certification portion, but to still be on the field and still make a difference with, with my lived experience. So I really thank you for, for being out there and doing this. Yeah. Thank you for mothers in recovery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's right. Um, Angeline, uh, you have a question. Yes. Uh, thank you, Giselle. And thank you for what you do in your presentation today. It would be nice if we would have had your PowerPoint at the beginning of our Hey session. Angeline, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's that's my classmate. Hi Danji. See you a week from Friday, right? Sorry about that, just so no, that's our, okay. we have a fantastic group. They told us that you were the third group there. We're very um we're very interactive with you with each other. It's been very I love it. Thank I you. It's it. very I love the camaraderie. It's a great group. I just wanted to ask if you could go over about some of the classes we could take take at our local colleges. And some of us are on scholarship programs. They said that's going to cover our fees. Is that, um, could you could clarify that for us too? Yeah. So um, scholarships at Cal Mesa are no longer available. As you guys know, we had some scholarships um, that were funded uh, to us for, for last year. Those Most of those have expired already. Um, obviously, they expire with your application. So don't fret. Just take a look at your application and, and that should have your expiration date. Um, I have heard that there are um, 
quite a few training providers that are providing uh, scholarships when you do their program. So what I say to that is just please take a look at their, um, you know, their websites. Um, did, uh, did, did you say that the program you're in said that you had a scholarship? Yes. And also for today to, to attend this, we got that. So that helped yeah, we us do. quite a bit. We, we do. We are on scholarship right now. Only oh, okay. We have to pay for our, uh, if we then they pay for our exam, Angeline, uh, okay. but only not only the first exam, not the not the other two. Yeah. So we're 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 good. OK, yeah. that helps us. Yeah, absolutely. And there's other um, training entities that are also providing scholarships. And so um, if you you or anyone else has questions about that, feel free to email email us um, because we are gathering that data. And of course it changes, you know, yes. we can't guarantee mm -hmm. it obviously, but we usually do have a running list of providers that tell us, um, Hey, can you let peers in the community know that we are offering scholarships at this time or that there's some kind of, you know, uh, financial assistance. And so yeah. we definitely want our peers to know about that. Thank you. And again, if you could let us know what classes we would specifically need to take at the local colleges, because a lot of these are you know pretty reasonable. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. So I think, you know, what we state on our website is that they are going to help you uh, enhance the work that you do out in the field. So um, we're pretty open about that. Um, it, you know, it can be really, there can be so many different classes, right? I mean, I've seen people take motivational interviewing, I've seen people take, uh, you know, CBT, I don't know, just really, I don't have a list of them per se. Um but if you want to email us, maybe uh, that's a really good question. And I really think that it might be something worth putting on our FI FAQ. So yes. do you mind sending me an email and I can see if we can come up with just a kind of a generic list for you? Even if it's not on the website, I can send it to you one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you. Could you put your email in the chat? And then here's something else. We could probably use this program with the local colleges to help, you know, because we have, we have mental health there too. And a lot of students could use the help and the training. Thank you, Giselle. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I'm putting in my email. Thank you. Uh, Michael, hi. Hi, thank you. Thanks so much for this. This is, um, it's been great. I got my certification back in August and it took me a while to get to the point where I was employed as a peer supporter. So I believe now I can apply to take the additional training. I'm interested in the family and, and uh, what was it? Family and um, family, uh, family member, caregiver, caregiver. Yeah. Yeah. Parent, family, um, caregiver. That's it. <laughs> it's um, a long one. So, but my question is along the lines of the last couple questions, where on the Cal Mesa or the CA peer support website, is it going to show? I know, um, places or entities that do uh, CEU training have different kinds of accreditations. Is that the right word? Yep. Um, is that going to be somewhere on the website where we can make sure we're getting the right kind of um, CEUs? I know there's like medical, there's like uh, psych psychology, I just want to make sure I'm taking the right courses. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, so on our website, let me see if I could bring that up right now. Um, how do I do that? Let's see. I have two screens. So. so on our website, if you go to training, um, uh, no, sorry, certification. This is kind of kind of give you a list here. Um, so um, acceptable curriculum material, certified medical peer support specialist training, areas of specialization, trainings that focus on significant recent developments in the discipline of peer support and or recovery, direct care training that covers peer recovery, spe specialty areas, any theoretical framework of recovery, wellness intervention techniques uh, with individuals or families or systems of care, indirect care training that covers like aspects of clinical practice, like legal or ethical issues, consultation, you know, record keeping, documentation, 
Um, and of course, the supervisor training, which is an hour training as well. Um, I think uh, this also has the list. I talked about the law and ethics requirement. I might as well share that with you guys right now. So these are the law and ethics training. It's obviously not limited to that, but this gives you a pretty good list. Um, so like law and ethics relevant to California, treatment of minors, right. state and com you know confidentiality, uh, record keeping, crisis support, uh, you know, client access to records, dual relationships, child abuse. We talked about elderly and dependent abuse. Um, telehealth services, insurance reimbursement, civil liability, disciplinary actions, and professional conduct, ethical complaint, ethical standards, standards of care, relevant family law, disclosures to clients, and the application of legal and ethical standards and different types of work. So this kind of gives you a good list. It also gives you a list of the some of the accredited boards here, like Katie, KDAP, CAM, CAMFT, what I was thinking ABS, about, yeah. and APA. Okay. If there's something that's not here and you're wondering, just shoot me an email and I'll ask our, our, our program manager. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. And so again, much. you find this under certification. So go into certification tab up here, and then you're going to go down to the sub tab, certification, renewal, and continuing education. That's how uh -huh. you get, get there. Okay. So okay. make sure. There's, there's a lot so of data. Much. You're welcome. Cool. And 4.30. What time is this class to, Colin? I think for... Uh, we have about... Uh, uh, yeah, a little less than 15 minutes. We're here till 4.45. Oh, okay. We're, we're, st we're yeah. still good on time. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. I have another question. Yeah, um, so this is my third uh, conference. Uh training today or group and um on the other ones are we going to have the same go the same route at the end we're going to go into the chat and you're going to put the link for us to go and do our um evaluation right. and yeah. request for our certificate yeah or i hope colin is doing that because oh okay. yes colin. <laughs> yeah i usually do that i usually do that when like we finish questions and we wrap up but Thank i can you. Yeah, Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Well, I'm just I'm surprised at me today that I've I really saw this uh I think probably before and I'm I didn't participate, but since we're in the class now, and you know, like I'm like, well, I need this information, I need to, you know, be a part of not just in class, but any conferences and and things of that nature that can help help me along the way. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for being here.